All right, everyone. Our next guest on the show for today is our biggest guest to date. You saw his work on the Tops Project 2020 online exclusive release this year, and also his 1951 Tops 52 card set, also an online exclusive. And yesterday actually dropped his first Tops Project 70 card, the Andrew McCutcheon. Please welcome my all time favorite artist, Blake James. Wow, What's I gotta up? get to do my intros every time. <laughs> Hell yeah. How you doing today, my man? What's going on? Oh man, I'm living the dream. Uh, it's exciting. You know, the top uh, 70 launching yesterday is, is a big day. It feels like, honestly, it feels like the card launched like a week ago because I've just done so much in the last 24 hours. Yeah, I bet, man. It's a beautiful yeah. card. I love it, dude. Um, so I can't express like how excited I am to have you with us today. And like I said, I actually just ordered your Project 70 card this morning and I plan on getting the complete 20 card set because Tops has this new incentive where if you buy all of one artist's 20 cards, you get the like uh, oversized, is it a poster or is it a card? What is that? Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, uh, that was a surprise to me too when I saw that oh, announced. It? Um, I think it's really cool. Um, it sounds like it's an oversized like foil stamp wall print. So yes. I don't really know what to expect in terms of size. Um, who knows? You know, you, you see like, you know, posters the tops will do sometimes where you like you open it up and it's a giant baseball field and you can like, yeah, your favorite players, you know, absolutely It'll be kind of like, you know, something like that. So that's coming from tops, not you then basically. Correct. Okay, cool. So it sounds really cool. It's an exclusive gold stamped oversized print featuring all 20 cards. So, you know, and the way they factor that in, I guess, if you order all 20 cards from the same account, they mm -hmm. automatically send it to you. So Sounds really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. Uh, it, it probably is going to be a logistical nightmare for them. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I bet. I think it's a cool incentive. So, yeah, man. Um, I actually, I read a few weeks ago because I was doing, I did my uh, a box review on your 1951 the first week. So I've got all four weeks, but I, I just received the second one last week. But the first week I did like a, a review and I kind of, you know, was like looking into like a, bi a biography of yours. And I ended up re running into the Beckett uh, Street Cards and Desire article. Um, and I was it was really interesting, man. Um, so I learned that you started your journey in Barcelona. Can you tell us a little bit about that adventure? Sure, man. So I was always creative and like always enjoyed making art, but decided not to pursue it uh, in college or, you know, any anything like at a serious level. Right. And so I majored in economics, worked in marketing uh, for almost a decade after college. And essentially, uh, I was 30 years old, living in Phoenix, Arizona, working a very corporate job that wasn't like creatively stimulating anymore. And so I decided to leave that job. And it wasn't it wasn't planned that I was going to leave my marketing career and start painting. It was just that I wanted to do something that I was really excited about, you know, to wake up and do every day. Um, for sure. I wasn't getting that from my old career. Uh, and so in Barcelona, uh, which is a city with a ridiculous uh, deep history of like street art um, and kind of culture there, I got into that just through like the free walking tours that take you through the city and, and kind of show you. Uh, and there's different ones. There's like architecture ones that'll show you Gaudi architecture. And that the one I took was street art and graffiti. And they just walked us through and kind of talked about that. And that kind of, I guess, rekindled you know, me like remembering like how much I enjoyed making art throughout my whole life, just as, you know, as a hobby. Absolutely. <clears throat> and so, uh, yeah, when I came back from the trip, I just decided that I might as well give the art thing a try. And if it didn't work out, you know, I knew I could always go back to marketing if I had to. For sure. Um, I definitely like left uh, a pretty like secure and decently paying career. You know, I'd worked my way up over a long time. I'd been with that company for a while. Um, you know, yeah, but you know, it's always fun to do something that you love, right? Ain't that? The oh, dream? yeah. I mean, and you know? you know, obviously, I feel I made the right choice. You yeah, know? absolutely, yeah. dude. I bet and even cool. at the time, like, I didn't really have any reservations just because I knew, like, oh, I can always come back to this life. But I yeah, man, I'm it's about. and it's nice to be able to have that fallback, you know, and, and and you and you're talented enough to be able to like say, hey, look, this is what I love to do. And if I can make money doing it, you know, I'm going to do it. But if, you know, if it falls through, I always got the fallback plan and, you know, that's great, man. It's, it seems like you're definitely poised for success, whichever, you know, no matter which way you go. So, uh, Thanks, man. 
how did the hobby fit into like did you start collecting as a kid or is it something like that you're just getting into like most of america right now with covid going on yeah. uh no i collected as a kid with my dad uh pretty much from uh age two and up i was going to oakland a's games um, oh that's cool we had season tickets to the a's and so we, you know i grew up idolizing mark mcguire collected cards for a while and then you know like i think a lot of us fell out of the hobby uh, although i did like you know i stopped collecting baseball cards i got into basketball for a little bit um and then i got into like pokemon and magic and beanie babies and pogs you know i was always like the kind of the collector yeah. mindset and like you know always out there hustling but that's um, awesome yeah i mean it's really it was tops project 2020 that brought me back into specifically the sports card hobby and it's been a, real, a really fun journey because I miss, you know, I miss that. And it's so different now, you know, when I grew up, the only cards that I could ever see were the ones at my local card store. Right. You know, or like in a Beckett. Um, yeah. But, you know, now with the internet, any card, any crazy one of one ridiculous card you can like, you can see and really like enjoy. It's awesome, man. Um, I know like myself, I did, I collected like Pokemon cards and stuff as a kid. I didn't really get into, you know, I had baseball cards and football cards and stuff like that, but I wasn't like into it really hard. Yeah. Like I was Pokemon. And then I kind of just got older and it just, you know, it seemed like that wasn't the cool thing anymore. So it's like, it just kind of fell off, but like, I wish, and I don't even know what happened to like my Pokemon collection, but I had some really like stuff that today would be crazy value, too, man. Crazy <laughs> value. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like uh German Charizards. I, I can remember that card, like, and then a Snorlax that was like a Japanese and it was like a PSA 10. So Wow. And I had no idea, no idea where those are at now. So, I mean, is that basically how you first started, like, um, the Project 2020? Is that how you started getting in with Tops, or have you worked with them in the past before at all? Uh, so that's that was the first time I'd worked with Tops, and uh, but it wasn't, you know, I'd made my focus of my art business for the last few years have been specifically focused on sports portraits and at portraits of professional athletes. So over the last 24 months, I'd done – 300 or so uh, paintings for professional athletes, which essentially is how wow. Tops found me is they saw some work that I'd done for, for an athlete. Awesome. And then they found, reached out on my website and asked if I wanted to be part of this project. Who, what, who was the athlete? Uh, I Paul, mean, like who was? Yeah. Paul, well, Paul Rabel was the one that, um, that Jeff saw. He is uh, one of the founders of PLL, which is oh. the lacrosse league. That's awesome, dude. Oh so, yeah. He's great. But um, man, it's, it's a lot. I mean, you, you name like any team uh, for, in the in NFL. I'm pretty sure I've painted people on every single team. Really? Uh, and, and for the most part, you know, it's painting them for them. Sometimes it's uh, purchases a gift from an agent, um, uh, girlfriend, wife, uh, you know. But yeah, I mean, who's, that's been my. Who uh, would be your Brown? I'm a big Browns fan, dude. Who Who's the Brown? Have you did any Brownies? Uh, well, I did OBJ when he was at the Really? Time. That's um, dope. Uh, which is cool. And I did uh, Joe Sherbert. Um, oh, yeah. And he's also, he's like super nice too. He is, dude. Uh, he's a really, really, really good guy. I wish we never would have traded him, man. He is. He was, and he was, an, he's an awesome player too, really. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. was a pro bowler for the Browns. No idea why we traded him. Yep. And so that's like an example of like he made the Pro Bowl. Uh, and then his agency, Athletes First, hired me to paint all of their clients who made the Pro Bowl. And so then that got me contacts with a lot of people. Um, and that was also pretty early in my sports, you know, focus. And so that was like a really big, uh, open a lot of doors for me. For sure. I bet that was amazing, man. Just meeting like players you're watching as a kid and stuff. And I mean, maybe right. some of these guys you're not watching as a kid, but you're watching them, right. you're seeing them on TV. They're professional right. athletes. I mean, that's like a dream for, you know, so many people. And you've got well, to well, see I've plenty said, of them. You know, I, I grew up idolizing Mark McGuire and going to those A's games and like top through top 2020, I was able to connect with him and like, we're close, which that's sucks. awesome. Like, we'll dude. Um, yeah, that's really it. Cool. He's, he's, he's a really nice guy. It's always cool when you meet your childhood heroes and they're, they're everything that you hope they would be, you know? Yeah, dude. I bet that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, the card's sick. I got the Mark McGuire card. Um, I actually, that was how I kind of found you, you know, through project 2020. And, yeah. um, you know, ever since then, I've been a huge fan of your art. I've been like, you know, checking out and trying to find like the perfect thing that I want to order and put in my, you know, my little man cave, I guess you could call yeah. it my sports card room. So I don't know if you remember this or not, but 
I had bought a card from, it was a Tony Gwynn card. I can't remember who the artist was on the card exactly, but it came to me with a little like fuzzy in the case. It's like, just like a little fuzz or something. Yeah. So I emailed tops about it. Never heard back. So then I go to Twitter to tops like, Hey, like, can I get a replacement for this? It was F dot card. Yeah. F dot. That's who it was. Yes. Okay. F dot. Yeah. So you're like, yeah, you're like, you know, Hey man, I'll send you a new replacement. I've got, you know, a stack of them here. Just send me, you know, send me that one. I'll send you this. So we swapped cards and he actually sent me, um, you know, like a little bonus package. And in that package, I actually have it sitting right here. I think he sent me a Francisco Lindor custom oh, card. Cool. Yeah. So I do got it. I can show. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty sweet, man. I love it. I got it displayed in like right in my front little, uh, case yeah. autographed and everything so ever since then dude i mean you you won me over for sure with that um just a pure act of kindness that you know you didn't have to do but i can tell just like by following you on twitter and stuff that you actually like to interact with the community you know what i mean your fans and stuff and you're like really engaging so i think that like really sets you apart man, that's all, that's such a cool like origin story of how we first connected it is man because i totally do remember that i hadn't put it together you know yeah before this that we were the the same guy (laughs) uh, i love that 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 is man so um all right man let's talk a little bit about the the tops 1951 set because me personally i'm a big fan they're like the smaller cards you know but it's like you know a recreation of the original 1951 tops so how did you guys, you know, you and Tops collaborate to come up with that little standalone release? Yeah, well, uh, pretty early into Project 2020 last year, so maybe in like June or July, uh, obviously the project was already taking off to crazy levels that no one expected. And so Tops, uh, you know, we kind of started a dialogue about doing future sets together. Uh, and I was really, I, I wanted that to happen. And sure. so with Tops 2020 doing so well, like I felt like it was a good time to get it going and so that's essentially what happened um we started spitballing different ideas we knew that you know the 70th year anniversary they wanted to kind of highlight the different sets over the years um my first uh pitch to them was to do uh t206 cards and do my yeah. kind of wave of t206 which i thought it actually looked like that was going to happen for a little while and so i created a ton of t206 art which i still have which is cool um and i sell as like prints and more i think i've seen some of that yeah but um yeah ultimately they decided that it wasn't the right fit for t206 but they suggested that uh starting the year with the 1951 um would be a good you know kind of way it is also like it's a vintage it's a it's a funky size card just like t206 which i like yeah so it's just fun to have that um you know it's also really cool to have the first you know product of the year before uh, series one and so like you know we have some guys some rookies in wave four that have the rookie car logo and so you know i know everyone said people can argue about which one's the true rookie card right but i think right. having the first rc printed on the player is like it's still a really cool thing regardless of you know whether people consider it dude know. i'm with you I, I like in like last year you know luis robert huge series two right his mm-hmm. flagship but you know, his, his first rookie card was actually in opening day, you know, as a short print, but still to me, I think that should be his flagship rookie because it was the first rookie card that tops released, you know, and right. tops is obviously the, the super giant of baseball. So I I'm with you, man. So who, is, who is, I mean, I ordered the, the week four, who is the rookie cards in the week four set? Uh, let's see. So we have uh, Casey Mize, uh, Joey Bart, um nice. alec bomb and uh man there's one other oh that's awesome that's gonna be a sick uh, lineup yeah it's i mean it's gonna be oh, God, I don't even know how to so, find so i ordered without even looking at the checklist i'll be honest with you because i knew i was gonna get it regardless didn't matter who was sure. coming out so um i'm glad i got it you know what i mean got the whole set and i'm doing you know like i said earlier i have the week one review and then i did the week two so week three is actually supposed to be here tomorrow so i'll get that on youtube And uh, eventually, you know, maybe throw them all together and do like a whole, um, you know, just basically the whole set. So glad you did it. Is there anything else coming? You got anything else you're working on with Tops right now? Well, so obviously Project 70 just starting um, is the primary focus. Right. Uh, Just like with 2020, I think um, 
once this gets going and everyone knows what's how you know we kind of have our systems in place uh i definitely um would like to explore the next move with tops i always want to stay one step ahead uh speaking of, you know i mentioned um jeff heckman uh who kind of headed tops project 2020 he found yeah. me through a portrait i did for paul rabel who's one of the founders and players in the premier lacrosse league right uh, jeff has an interest in lacrosse and i played lacrosse in college and so like um that's one thing that we we think could be a really fun you know opportunity to explore uh i, I also love like gpk as a product yeah yeah like, t- doing my take on some gpk i think would be a lot of fun yeah um, man and like tops has been really cool with artists in letting them kind of navigate their own sets so you look at like f dot did a stadium set which i think was super cool it is um yeah so i think there's a ton of flexibility i definitely think you know if i tried to hit up tops today and be like hey let's chat ideas about our next set together they're gonna be like dude your first card's still out like chill. <laughs> <laughs> right. all right this is this is all this is all we're kind of focused on right now but Hey, yeah, but I'm with you, man. While your name is fresh, you got to keep, you know, keep pumping it in there because uh, and well, it's... I've got I've got other uh, other irons in the fire. And one of them I saw on your questions, um, like Top Shot, just like NFTs in general, um, I think are fascinating. So that's outside of tops, like something that I definitely want to start focusing on in my business. Yeah. So that's actually what I was going to jump right into next, man. Um, so you've heard of top shot, obviously, are you invested at all yet? Or uh, I, I signed up and I wanted to pack and they're all sold out. <laughs> I, I don't just want to buy a moment. Like to me, like the fun is in ripping packs. And, and sure. honestly, like as a collector, I was the same way. Uh, I love, I love ripping packs. Yeah. So. It, I mean, the nostalgia in that is just unbelievable. It seems like right now, I mean, NBA players are just tweeting out at uh, Top Shot and getting free packs. So maybe that's all you need to do, man. Like, hey, where's my packs, Top Shot? What's going on? That's true. I probably yeah. should. So I've got, I, I did know, actually. I got that clout yet. <laughs> well, you know what, dude? I actually, I got really lucky last, I think last Monday, they dropped that second uh, Cool Packs set pack um so i ended up getting it every and then like I, i'm just like everybody else i've been trying to get every pack since they've been released and struck out but i got lucky last week i got my first pack and uh literally i'm invested 14 dollars right now and i'm like up over three thousand in value so it's it's insane, insane dude That's it's insane. insane yeah i mean i don't think that um I, i'm i'm bullish on that whole thing but I don't think it can sustain what's happening right now. No, 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 no. I don't think so either. This is, this is a bubble that's going to come back down to earth. Uh, it's got and, to. And now, and it's funny because I have a better uh, grasp of what that feels like. Um, but now I'm seeing it from the other side. Like last year with Project 2020, when things started to take off and print runs just went, you know, 20,000, 70,000, yeah. 100,000. I'm like, this this rocket ship will never stop. And, you know, <laughs> obviously. So, uh, yeah, I think Top Shot will come will level off, but I still think it's a really exciting space. I think it's got a lot of potential. For um, sure. So yeah. touching on the project 2020, going back to it, like you yeah. said, the early cards, it seemed like um, they just, you were like kind of a, sh- a lower print run. So they were selling ridiculously high, like right out the gate. And then everybody was like, okay, I got to jump in. So that's where we seen the print runs jump up to like 70,000, like you said. And I thought it was going to the moon too, man. I didn't see any end in in sight, but it did. It started to level back down, I think. But, you know, for me personally, the cards I was wearing, I'm like kind of happy that it had a smaller print run, you know, because that makes it more rare to me. But I know as an artist, you want to put out more products. So it's a little different on your end. I mean, it varies. I think that um, there's pros and cons to both. For sure. For sure. So back to Top Shot. What do you, I mean, I know you said that you don't think it can sustain. Do you think it can survive though, as like another hobby for, you know, the community, like another form of collectible? Totally. I think digital collectible space is, uh, is here to stay. I just think that there's a lot that needs to happen. Like there's, there's a bunch of, I think, information gap between people that understand it and, and then the general community. Sure. And uh, I think that needs to be like, like we need to shorten the gap. And I don't know how, how that is like simplifying, like how we can explain what it is. Especially like um, NFTs, you know, cause exactly. those, exactly. you know, street fighter, I, I jumped right in and bought some packs, you know, I don't know yeah. if you did, but wow. that's awesome. And it didn't turn out to be as what I thought it would be. Like I got, I made my money back for sure, you know, but like, it wasn't, 
you know, people were expecting it to be top shot, you know, sure. but it, it just, it wasn't, and it isn't, but it, maybe it could be, I don't know. Then mm-hmm. tops came out with the, the garbage pail kids too. I don't know if you saw that, but um, they look pretty cool, you know? And mm-hmm. I think if you could get in or, you know, the artists can get in and start messing with their, um, you know, a little bit of artwork in on these, I think they could really blow up, man. I think they're awesome. So, and I'm with you. I think that they are here to stay. I don't think they're going to, the prices are going to, sustain what they're at right now but i also don't think sports card prices i mean we're seeing cards like justin herbert's coming out at peak price you know and people were buying them up for a thousand dollars for an autograph when you get a brett Favre autograph for a hundred bucks or something you know or drew Brees. so it's like how can he come out and be a thousand dollars for an auto and then we got these legendary oh, hall of fame also scarcity i mean think about how many autographs drew Brees has signed true that's true you know, yeah versus oh. Her- herbert like is way rarer um, you're right you are right because so, he, he's been around for a lot longer so sure he's got a lot more stuff out there yeah um and so that's like and like i did a ton of autographs in 2020 right between i allowed customers to send in their free their cards they buy of mine i'll sign them for free in black and then i sold copies of different color autograph cards um and i tracked how many i assigned it was thousands of thousands of really cards. So something i ch- did on 1951 is I changed my autograph. And so now at first it used to just say BJ for my initials. And now I sign Blake, like full out Blake. Oh, okay. uh, and so that's something that I'm excited to do this year is like to just switch up my autograph. And that's not completely uncommon. Um, like Andy Warhol would change his autograph every year. And yeah. so can, like tell if a painting is real sometimes by like if the autograph matches the era that was that it was painted. I like that because um, it you can kind of distinguish, like you said, the era that it come from, you know, if it was, you know, oh, well, he was signing like this from, you know, 2020 to 2025. And then, you know, his later stage of his career, I think it's pretty cool. I think my auto is a BJ. So I'm going to have to get a Blake, man. I'm definitely going to have yeah. to get one. <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask, man, are you like, do you, if a new release, like say series one and optic just came out, are you the guy that are you going and getting a hobby box of it and ripping it? Or, or are you kind of uh, like last year I was just cause I really wanted to like dive in and, and be in it. Um, so we were, we were getting as much as we could and, and force, you know, being an artist for tops has its benefits, you know, and sure. like, uh, what is it? Like Bowman Sapphire comes out. Uh, and I tell Jeff, say, Hey man, me and the team would really like a box each, like we're happy to pay full retail. So we still do have to pay, you know, right. for free, but, um, at least when there's something like there's a waiting list product, being an artist has its benefits in that sense. So, uh, I did that a lot last year, this year. I also like, it, I moved at the end of the year and I'm in a new space. And so during the move, I just realized like how many cards I accumulated in just one year <laughs> and it's just not sustainable. So like I yeah. trimmed a lot of fat mail, gave out a lot of free cards, um, and I'm trying to like discourage because also like, and really most of those cards, either a boxes I bought and ripped or B like fans will send, you know, send cards because they're like, care oh, you've been out of the hobby for, you know, decades, here are a few cards to get you back in of your favorite players. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really generous. It um, is I'm telling people like, don't send me base card, you know, <laughs> yeah. a cool die cut Buster Posey. Sure. But like, I don't, I don't just want like your extra base yeah oakland days cards i don't care that much that's funny because like whenever i started breaking and obviously it's not on the same scale but like the guys that started joining my breaks and i just started like when covid happened i got back into the hobby like a lot of people so then i started and i wasn't doing like breaks with other people or anything i was like just breaking my own you know getting a hobby box and just ripping it myself i thought that was a break but you know then people were like look you need to really do breaks you know what i mean we'll get in on this with you blah 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 well, and then people would start sending me cards and it's all commons, you know, it's like a box. And I'm like, dude, like yeah. all I'm going to do is put these like in a box and stash them away. Right. And so I'm with you on that. Like, if you're going to send me something, man, make it, you know, it's just one card, make it a nice card. I don't want all these common cards, man. Cause I'm in the same boat after a year of collecting and just ripping nonstop. Like my office is insane right now. My wife wants to leave me and uh, <laughs> no, I actually started collect. So I saved every box I opened. If you can see behind me, yeah. I got like this little, I'd make like collages. I cut the faces off the boxes and I do like yeah. football, baseball, basketball. So I, I've got every single box I've ever, ever opened, 
and they're everywhere dude they're like my bathroom's half full my office is full my bedroom's full so she's wanting to kill me um over that but it's a lot of fun and I have fun putting and I'm not very artsy at all you know but I put these together and they look pretty good I think you know I've had people offer to buy them off me and stuff so I think I'm doing all right with it (laughs) I like those four project 2020 boxes you got yeah the corners yeah man for sure for sure um so who do you who do you collect like what's your big pc guy do you have like a holy yeah. grail uh well i got a handful so i collect mark mcguire um i have a really pretty solid uh, mark collection uh buster posey okay um john morant yes uh a little bit of zion i was kind of going back and forth between zion and jaw but i'm really i like jaw same um, term and uh and then a couple football guys josh jacobs okay uh, Miles Sanders, solid. Uh, those guys because they were like really, really cool, good customers to me. I guess it was two years ago now. Their rookie years, um, I did a handful of paintings for each of them. Oh, okay, so they invested in their careers. You yeah, know, that's and, awesome. Yeah, I mean, both, and then they both did really well. You know, they're yeah. top uh, top tier rookie running backs and had decent second years. Yeah, I mean, they're both actually still pretty solid in the league right now. I mean, uh, I mean Josh Jacobs hasn't had another thousand yard. Yep. Uh, Miles Sanders, uh, he's still in Philly, I believe, right? Um, yes. And then I, I randomly I added um, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, okay. Um, and part of it is like sometimes like I was ripping, we were ripping packs and like I got like a sweet like auto patch. And I'm like, all right, I'm keeping that. Exactly. And then, like later I get like another auto. I'm like, mm, this is starting to look like the, <laughs> right. you know? the PC started now. Uh, a little bit last year. We were That's running. awesome. Yeah. So, Hey, that's, and that, and you know, those aren't like your typical guys that people would say, you know, like Herbert. Right. Or... Which, but I think that's so fun. Cause then I can like get tons of really cool cards cheap, you know, it's not Absolutely. like Jordan where I'm like, like I could legit get like a super, super short print Brandon Ayuk card, you know, numbered one of one. And it's probably going to be like a hundred bucks. Dude, I know. You know? And, and, it, and then I go get it graded. And then it's like, to me, that's like priceless and cool. It is like, man. So that's, I actually really like that. That's kind of my strategy, I guess, outside of like John Morant. Um, but like all those other guys are not like, you know, it's not the Ken Griffey, Mike Trout. Right. Willie, really, you know, whatever. I'm kind of, I'm kind of similar in that sense because I'm like big and I started out huge in baseball and I really didn't get into like basketball and football until a little later, but uh, Bobby Bradley for the Indians, he's like, You know, he got his rookie card in series one and I could buy his autos for like three bucks. You know what I mean? I was buying, you know, numbered autos, three bucks, five bucks, ten bucks. So hopefully to me, it's like if this guy blows up, you know, I've got 35 autos of his, you know, so I'm the same way. I want to go get this guy that's kind of cheaper, you know, and that like nobody, not everybody's going after. And then if he blows up, sweet. If not, he's still like one of my favorite players. So you know, I'm just going to keep it my piece, my personal collection anyway. So it is what it is. Yep. Um, so um, what's like the biggest card that you've hit value wise ripping in the last year? Uh, it's actually, it was a um, Pokemon. Yeah. Um, and it was, uh, what was the elite trainer box? And I hit uh, Charizard V. It wasn't the max one, but it was like, is it shiny? Uh, at the time, it, yeah, it was super shiny. At the time, like comps on it, uh, like just raw, ungraded out of the pack were like 800 bucks. Oh, wow. That was probably um, the shiny V then, right? Yeah. I probably should have sold it then. Um, yeah. I still have it. I actually, I was sorting cards today. I, I was <laughs> like, this is a cool looking card. I mean, but it, it doesn't matter because like it was out of a $50 Elite Trainer box that yeah. like, I just opened just to have fun. Like I was on vacation. Yeah, and, man. I, I get yeah. into, honestly, I buy, well, my kids are are pretty young right now, but like, I'm buying Pokemon cards now to like, you know, give the, to them, you know, whenever they get a little older and they care about it. Like I tried getting them into it, but they're just like, they, you know what I mean? Their attention span is just not there yet, but I hit a Charizard V max and I'm like, look, should I save this or do I sell it and buy more Pokemon cards? You know? And I ended up did selling it and like, man, I've been kicking myself ever since. So it's a, probably a good thing you held on to that because over time it's going to carry more value to you. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like it's at the time, like I mean, Project 2020 was full and cooking. I didn't want to like take time away and be like, all right, let me like list this on eBay and spend time on that. Right. I have a lot of other stuff going on. Absolutely. So is there before I let you go, Blake, um, is there like any does does tops do you know have anything going on? Like 
I know we got the Project 70 coming out. Is there another artist release where, where all you guys are going to get together and do something like this later on in the year for the 70 year anniversary? Well, no, I mean, this is, this is the monster project of the yeah. year. So there, okay. It's like 1,020 cards, um, you know, 51 artists, 20 cards each. So I definitely don't think they're going to do any projects this year uh, that involve like group, you know, art, of artists like this, because this is the flag. Yeah, it's pretty big. That space, right? Sure. But, um, you know, in the future, who knows uh, if, you know, I think that this is being done because Project 2020 was such a success. And if yeah. the success continues to roll, I mean, I can't imagine Tops is not the one to like back off and say, well, let's just let that cool off for a while. Right. You know, they're <laughs> right. they're going to push it. If it ain't broke, don't because, fix it. Right. You know, because, you know, that if they don't, then somebody, you know, Upper Deck's going to come in yeah. and do it. Um, yeah, for sure. Anyway, like you said, man, it's super successful. I love seeing it. And, and, you know, it's probably like last year, Project 2020 lasted for a long time. You know, it was like, mm -hmm. you know, you release this what they do longer. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, because, I mean, there's more cards in this one. Right. I mean, so we should probably see this for a good part of the season. Yeah, like three X. Yeah. Three X. What do you. So here's my we'll question see this for a very long time. You will see it for a long time. <laughs> I, I'm glad I welcome it because personally, like I said, I picked up the first three cards and then I was in my head. I was like, I can't, I can't afford to buy every three card set that comes. Cause there's going to be so many. So then I, then I saw the thing where it's 20 cards, you know? So I'm like, I'm just going to pick up all Blake's cards. And then, you know, I'll pick up some stragglers here and there that I like. So I'm, I'm a big Lindor fan hated that we traded them to the Mets, obviously. So you're going to probably do a Lindor card. I imagine. Right. I am Mets gear, Indians Mets, gear. Mets gear. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping that maybe I could see Lindor in an Indians jersey one last time, but I don't think it's going to happen. So that's why I, I figured I'd ask you. MLB would let us. To be oh, honest. really? Yeah, and and that's not even tops. That's MLB. okay. Um, so that's good to know. I didn't know that. I figured yeah. maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a throwback, seventy years anniversary. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um. All right, man. So I'll tell you what. We had a great time. I had a great time having you. So glad that you could come on and uh, spend your time with us. Love to do it again sometime, man. Um, so is there anything that maybe you want to let our listeners know to look out for coming from you or maybe give us uh, your website to. Yeah, sure. Art? So, so my website is Blake.art. And um, also I would encourage people to check out my YouTube. So it's just YouTube slash Blake Jameson. And if they subscribe before the end of the month, so there's still a week uh, left. Uh, I'm doing a Ken Griffey auto giveaway uh, and I'm actually, I'll do another one next month anyway. So at any time, like being subscribed, I'm going to be doing some very big giveaways on my YouTube this year. I really want to kind of focus on growing that channel. Uh, sure. and that's also where I share a ton of content process videos of making my cards, interviews with other artists. I've already had Lauren Taylor on DJ ski, uh, Gregory Siff and Brittany Palmer are coming on tomorrow. So yeah, YouTube is probably a great way or twitter if you want to like directly ask me a question right man and like we mentioned earlier he's really engaging on twitter um i've watched a lot of the youtube videos they're super fun to watch like where he's creating the cards um and just being able to see like how these cards are created you know like do you, if i remember correctly you guys like you laid them all out right and then you like do that you go up and paint them like kind of like all together or how like well the ones that you do like the custom cards i mean yeah. So like the one that you had, the, um, the one that was painted on, um, yeah, that one was, yeah, I'll do that in batches. Uh, yeah. That's sweet. It, it looked really cool, man. The, just, just being able to see like your studio and stuff and, and watch you do what you do, um, is really fun. So guys, again, make sure you go subscribe to Blake on YouTube. And you said it was, um, Blake, Blake, James. Blake James. Okay. Um, all right. Again, thank you for coming on, Blake, man. We had a great time with you. Appreciate it. And uh, good fortunes for your future with Tops, man. I hope uh, I hope you guys really can uh, blow up together and it never ends. All right. I appreciate it. Man. All right, brother. Take care, man. Bye. Peace.